Uh, so I did pay attention a little bit when I went to some lessons. So all right, so let's go ahead. And we're going to dig in the Word. And if you have a, a Bible, let's turn to the book of James and uh, James three. And uh, we're going to go through uh, here, and we'll be continuing on. And uh, the thoughts uh, that the Lord has been showing, and uh, we're going to look expositorily. Uh, I I like uh, preaching when when there's one verse and that's good but sometimes you got to look at a context and uh, it's very easy to go ahead and get one verse and blow a lot of steam so we want to go ahead and we want to uh, just give you this context uh, is, is anybody was able to hear the missionary last week did, did anybody enjoy that at all all right praise the lord we're excited so you be praying for us uh, I, I would like for us to uh, support our first missionary and uh, I'm excited for that. I know that they were a sweet couple, and I've met different missionaries uh, over, over the years, and they were definitely friendly, and uh, good to have them with us. So James 3 and verse number 13 is where we're going to start, and uh, we'll start verse 13. It says this. It says, Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness, of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. For the mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Let's have a word of prayer. Jesus, we want to tell you we love you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time we have here this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. And Lord, we have a copy of it. And uh, Lord, your inspired word. And Lord, I, I pray this morning, Lord, you'd help us. Lord, I pray... Uh, you'd help me these next few moments. God, I pray you'd empty me, Lord, of sin and self and pride. Lord, empty me of myself, Lord, and I pray for these next few moments. Lord, you'd help every individual in here. And Lord, I pray that uh, as Christians, uh, it would be said about us that we are wise Christians. And uh, Lord, that uh, we, we might know much about the Bible. But Lord, help us to put that into action. And uh, Lord, I pray you just bless this time here. Lord, we'll thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I, I want to look this morning, and uh, I, this is going to be the thought. James, uh, he says, who is a wise man? We can say woman, too. We don't want to just preach to the men. Even though the men need it, the women do, too. We all need it. But who is a wise man? Now, uh, James, uh, we, we talked about James, that uh, James in the beginning, and, and even through this book, the thought is Christian maturity. Uh, how that God desires for us as believers to mature in the faith. Now, if you've been saved for any amount of time, God wants you to grow in Him. God wants you to. Uh, it doesn't matter if, if, if you're a child or if, if maybe you've been saved for a couple of years, you've been saved for years. God wants us to continue to grow. I've told people, I have not arrived and I probably won't, won't ever arrive. Uh, we as Christians, we need to understand that what? We all are at different places. We all can grow in other areas. Uh, I, I've grown a, a lot in these last two years. Uh, I, I've told people I, I've never pastored before. Uh, I, 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 there's people that have. There's some here. That there's things that maybe in your Christian life you're doing you didn't do before. And what it, does God want for us in our Christian life? For us to grow. Now we understand what the first step if we're going to grow, and, and we understand that if we want to grow in the faith, what's something we need? Well, we need wisdom. I want to be uh, somebody that can be said that. I have been a wise Christian. Now, I'm going to say this. There have been times in my Christian life where you could have looked at me and I would not have looked like a wise Christian. There's been times that I've pastored. You'd probably look at me and say, boy, he's not a wise pastor. And you could probably say that even about your Christian life. You could probably say there has been times when maybe you, it couldn't have been said about you. You're somebody that was a wise Christian. Now, we understand what? If you want to get wise, what's the first thing? Well, you need to get saved. That, that's the first thing. There is, there's, uh, there's wise decisions and there's unwise decisions. The, the greatest decision you ever make is to be saved. 
and that's God's desire in our life. Uh, people uh, don't want to hear that, but guess what? If you want to go to heaven, you have to be saved. That's not because I made it up. It's not because someone else said it. You have to be. And uh, you must be born again. There's not many ways to heaven. There's one way. So as a saved person, what? Uh, we, we should have, uh, 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 we be in a place where what? We want to grow in wisdom as a saved person. Uh, many of the problems we face, uh, I believe today, in the church uh, can be a result uh, of the lack of wisdom in our life. I believe that. I believe that's why we see maybe the divisions. That's why we see a strife at times. Why? Because there's a lack of wisdom. Now, I'm not, I, we're going to look at this wisdom. That there's two different kinds of wisdom that, that Pastor James is going to speak about. He's going to talk about this earthly wisdom, but he's going to talk about godly wisdom. You realize there can be godly wisdom in church. I believe that, that God wants us to have godly wisdom in this church. I believe that God wants us to have it. But there might be times when what? We don't have that godly wisdom. And I want to look at this that we uh, might have a lack of it. Sometimes I believe that the problems maybe sometimes that, that are happening in church, what is a result of a lack of wisdom. So we want to look at this. And, and I looked up the word wisdom in 1828, and I thought this was pretty good. It is the right use or exercise of knowledge. Now, do you ever meet anybody that knew it all? <laughs> and uh, I did when I was 12 or 13. And, uh, uh, but there, there's some people, what they know it all, but they don't know how to exercise what they know. I've known Christians sometimes that they're, they're very boastful that, you know, they, they, they know all kinds of stuff, but they have not been good at exercising what they know. Now, I'm not saying that all, and we just want to make it known that we know it all. But as a Christian, what? If I, I know some things, we should exercise what we know from God's Word in our life. Now, James talks, what, about this wisdom. So, uh, we should desire for God's wisdom. Some today will ask God for wisdom in many different things, and maybe things that don't really matter. We might ask God, God, I need wisdom on where I should get after here. <laughs> and uh, God might not, not necessarily be concerned about that. Now, and there's things you can sell. Just go to horses. They have steak. They have, they have ice cream, all you can eat. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but there's things that maybe you can, you can say, God, I need wisdom about, but there's things that where what we need God's wisdom. And that uh, God's wisdom, God has given us different things, and there's certain things we, we, we might not have to necessarily make it a debate on. You realize, you know, you know should we win souls to the Lord? We ought to do it, because that's what God told us to do. I understand that we live in a different day, and, and, and I'm not saying that we ought to just go ahead and, and go to, in our town and just go ahead and knock on every door. I'm not saying that all the time, because I know there's crazies around. But you realize we have people around us every day. We have an opportunity to witness to them and share the gospel with them. They might not want to hear it, but guess what? They need to hear it because what we uh, will give an account one day. You know, uh, people say, should I get involved in church? Yeah, we ought to try and serve the Lord. We ought to do our part. Uh, we all have a place in the ministry of the local church, and uh, we ought to do our part. So every Christian what should strive to uh, be a wise Christian. And we're going to look at three areas of a wise person. And then we'll go to the house. Let's notice number one. There is the showing of the wise man or the wise woman. What, what, what's this showing? This is the behavior. This is verse 13. It says this. It says, Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? So there's this question mark. I didn't really do too good in English, but I know question mark means you need to think about this for a second. And uh, it says, what, endued with knowledge. So, so it says, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge? Uh, that, that, that word, if you look up in the Strong's, endued with knowledge, that's together. Uh, that means intelligent. Uh, so, so someone that may be, you know, some people, what they might say they're intelligent. Uh, there's some people that, that they might be intelligent in some things. You, know, you ever find someone that was really smart in some things, but then they, they, they just didn't have common sense? You ever find anybody like that? They, they, they have all the brains to, you know, you know, put stuff together and to do different things. But certain stuff, they just ain't got the common sense. They don't have, have it. So uh, some of us, what, maybe we have uh, this intelligence, but we need to make sure, what, how do we use it? So who is the wise man endued with knowledge among you? Okay, so he's asking a question. So he said, let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. So he said, let him show 
out of a good conversation. You say, is that mean I'm talking necessarily just about his talk? Should we uh, talk the right talk? We should. But that, that word in the King James, if you look up that word conversation, it just means a behavior. Uh, uh, who, who, uh, show, let him show out of his, uh, his uh, out a good behavior. Some of us, what, we might be, uh, say we're a wise Christian, but what, it does not show in our behavior. He said his works, so it means some works that you go with it. It says with meekness of wisdom. So we need to understand meekness. We, sometimes we, we think that meekness is, is a weakness. It's not necessarily. Our Lord, what, he was meek and lowly. Our Lord set the standard for, for what a, a meek life is. That word meekness just means a mildness or humility. We need to have humility in the Christian life. There's times when I need knocked off my high horse. There's times when I, 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 I need to uh, become more humble. <laughs> we need to be humble in this Christian life. I, I, I thought this was very, very interesting. Uh, if you're to give a definition for meekness, it's power under control. I think the Lord definitely showed us an example of what power under control is. And uh, as a Christian, uh, do we have the power behind us? You sure do if you're saved and born again. You've got the Holy Spirit power living down inside of you. <laughs> but I've understood that there's times when sometimes I have this also, this old nature that I battle with, and you battle with as a, as a born again child of God. You battle what with this old nature? And what I need to do sometimes, I need to go ahead and just maybe uh, keep him uh, in the back. I need to go ahead and shut him up. I need to be, uh, sometimes he wants to stand up. <laughs> and I need to tell him, go ahead and sit down. <laughs> Uh, I, some of us know that. So there is this, this uh, meekness that we need to have. And uh, we as Christians, what? If I want to be somebody that, that is a wise person, what do I need to have? Well, there's a behavior, okay? Uh, as a Christian, we need to understand uh, true wisdom is not always spoken. It's not always spoken, even though we think. We live in a, a day when people like to speak stuff. You know, you, people can get on social media and they like to speak their brains out. Not that everybody cares, uh, but you can, people are going to speak and stuff about what you speak, but it's about what you show maybe to this world. Uh, th there can be uh, some today, and I, I've been, uh, you know, I've maybe been in this place and others can. Some ha have convinced themselves uh, that maybe uh, they are a wise Christian when they really aren't. You can convince yourself maybe you've really, uh, you're a wise Christian, but what? It does not show up in your behavior. Someone that has been uh, growing in the faith, then it is wise what it will show up. Uh, true wisdom is expressed through our daily li living, my daily living. I, I have Christian life, and i got to live this thing daily, and so do you. We, we, it's not just a one-day-a-week thing. Uh, you know, they, they say, well, you know, the preacher, he just works, you know, one day a week, huh? Uh, there's this, this, this Christian life. Uh, we all have a daily Christian life to live. And with my Christian life, what, is there a behavior that lines up with somebody this wise? Now, uh, Christians, what, we can be guilty uh, of not having den the knowledge. You know, we, we, we uh, maybe don't know have knowledge, but, but some of here, what, we have grown in our faith. There's things you know more now than when you knew before. Now, uh, is there truths of this book that I still don't know? There are. <laughs> but wh what has happened in my Christian life since I've been saved? I start, I, I've learned this book. I've learned it, and I'm still learning this book. And, not, and there's nobody here that says, Stay preacher, I know the whole book, because you don't. <laughs> and, uh, but I've had to take what I've known, what I've learned... <laughs> The knowledge that was bestowed on me. And what have I had to do? I've had to take what I've learned and to put it into action. Now, that's the problem. The problem is what? Sometimes as Christians, we know things, but what? It doesn't necessarily come out in our behavior. There are some things we, we can say, well, you know, I know God, God says about this or that. And we can say it all day long. But until what it shows in our behavior what it does not show that we have been if we have become what more wise in our faith you you realize you, you can know the bible from cover to cover and not use the knowledge in the right way and i've seen people and, and you you know people we all have maybe been a place 
Well, we, we, we say we can know it and people maybe know it, but they don't use that knowledge in the right way. And I want to be a Christian that does. So uh, I want to give you uh, this uh, fable. One of Asaph's fables concerned a turtle who envied the ducks who swam in the pond where he lived. <laughs> As he listened to them describe the wonders of the world they had seen, he was filled with a great desire to travel. But being a turtle, he was unable to travel far. Finally, two ducks offered to help him. One of the ducks said, We will each hold an end of a stick in our mouths. You hold the stick in the middle in your mouth, and we will carry you through the air so that you can see what we see when we fly. Uh, but be quiet, or you'll be sorry. The turtle loved the idea. He took hold of the stick, and away into the sky they went. The ducks flew up above the trees and circled around the meadow. The turtle was amazed and overjoyed at his new perspective on the world. He marveled at the flowers on the hillside. Just then, a crow flew past. Astonished at the sight of the turtle flying through the air, carried by two ducks, he said, surely this must be the king of the turtles. Why, certainly, the turtle began, but as he spoke, he lost his grip on the stick and fell to the ground below. Sometimes what we're guilty of what may be saying and we're not really showing with our behavior of a, of a wise man. Let me ask you a question. What kind of behavior do you have? Uh, I, I, I want to make sure that as a Christian I have the right kind of behavior. Uh, what? They'll watch us. Your kids will watch you. Your co-workers will watch you. Uh, people in this church will watch you. There, there's a lost world that will watch you. And I want to make sure what? I have the right behavior as a wise man, that I have the wisdom. This, this notice number two, there's the struggle of the wise man, the struggle that takes place. Uh, yes, uh, wisdom is, is, is available. What do we know? Uh, God uh, has wisdom, and what we know, it's available. It tells us that in James. If any man lack wisdom, let him ask about to give it to all men liberally, and abradeth not. So God has wisdom. Uh, the struggle that takes place in verses 14 through 16, this is what it says. Uh, so James was starting off pretty good there in verse 13, and he said, But the sermon's going to turn the other way. <laughs> if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, lie not against the truth. So he said, If you have uh, bitter envying in your hearts, so that's not a good thing. Uh, what do we know? Sometimes there can be Christians, what? They have bitterness in their life. I have seen firsthand how bitterness has not only hindered a Christian, but it's also hindered other people around them. It's bad. It's not a good thing. And he said, if you have bitter envying, so, so bitter, it just means kind of like a sharp, or the idea of, of piercing, and envying, what do you mean, like a jealousy. So if you have this, or indignation, you have ill will towards somebody. Do you realize that even people sitting in church, they can have ill will towards another person sitting in the same church? That shouldn't be. It can happen. It can happen sometimes. Uh, I've been guilty of it. Others in here, you've probably been guilty of it at times. So he said, if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, there's contention. Uh, you ever been around someone that all they want to do is just fight? <laughs> I think sometimes Baptists are guilty of it, the, the, the most fightingest crowd eh, around. Sometimes they've been guilty. Sometimes church people can be so guilty of having contention with one another. And uh, what? It, we can have this, and it's a bitter envy and strife in your heart. So, so where's the problem? What? It's in the heart. Uh, uh, where's it? Where's this? This? Uh, this come from? The heart. So that's where it starts. And then what? If it gets in there, what? It'll come out. And he said, "Glory not." So, so, so don't rejoice about this. Don't be happy about this. And he said, "Lie not against the truth." So that means don't go against the truth. Don't go. Don't say you believe the truth and know the truth. But what you allow these things in your heart and life. Sometimes I've been guilty. What is a Christian uh, uh, of what saying? I know the truth. I, I love the truth and I want to tell the truth, but then I have these things in my heart that aren't good. And what do I need to be careful of? That I uh, watch in that. He said this, verse 15. This wisdom, so he's talking about what? This, this worldly wisdom. He said, this wisdom, what? Descendeth not from above. So it's not from God. It, it did not come from God. And he said this, he said, for, uh, but it is earthly. So earthly, that just means worldly, sensual, that just would be like natural and devilish. What's devilish? It means it, it's not a good thing. 
So if I allow these things, isn't that interesting? It's just like the three enemies we have, the world, the flesh, and the devil. He said, verse 16, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion. So if I have this envy and strife in my life, what, what is it? There's confusion. So what's this confusion? This means disorder, uh, instability. So as a child of God, if I allow this envy and strife in my life, uh, what, there's confusion in every evil works. There's evil that come about it. So what's the struggle of the wise man? There's a struggle we have. This flesh, what I need to battle with it, uh, worldly wisdom, if you realize we allow worldly wisdom to get in the way, what's going to produce? Trouble. There's been times as a Christian where we, uh, we, as a Christian, we can be guilty, what, of trying to understand things. There could be times we think it ought to be this way or that way or think that we know the best way. And what have we found? Uh, sometimes that causes trouble. Not just in my life, but it causes trouble in other people's lives also as a Christian. So if I allow God to give me his wisdom, what? It's not going to, uh, it's going to help me so I don't have this kind of wisdom, this world of wisdom, this wisdom that is from the earth. So there can be this wisdom that the world gives and God's wisdom is different than, than the world's wisdom. Uh, you know, we, I, I, I want to have God the wisdom. Do you realize I could hinder the truth by not having God's wisdom in my life? I can hinder it. Now, should we preach the truth? We need to. Do we need to preach the Bible? We sure do need to. But I need to be careful what? That I don't allow this envying and strife in my life. Why? Because it can produce some bad things. Uh, there, there, there's some people you'll find even in church there's some people that just don't get along with anybody you know I, I understand that, that, that in church uh, you're going to have problems why? because it's church and <laughs> we got problems anybody got a problem here raise their hand I got a problem everybody, we all got problems we were just a, well, why don't we just nick, change the name to Problems Baptist Church and uh, uh, we all have them and, and, and there's some people they just think they're just going to find you know, I'm going to find me the perfect church, and I'm just going to go ahead and join it. Don't join it. You're going to mess it up. <laughs> and uh, but there's some people, they just think, I'm just going to find that, that, that perfect church. Well, guess what? You ain't going to find it. You might as well just stay at home. <laughs> Start your own church, Bedside Baptist Church. <laughs> and and we, we can have the, this idea that, that, that you, know, you know, it's going to be perfect. But I've, uh, I've understood that if you have people in there, what? There's going to be contention. Now, as a child of God, uh, we need to understand, you preach the truth and you, you proclaim the truth, uh, it's not always going to make everybody happy. It's not going to make everybody happy in the church. Uh, some people, they're going to get mad when you preach the truth. But we also what, need to preach the truth. I look at the Bible, says, speaking the truth in love. That's what the Paul said. Isn't that good? We need to speak the truth, but what in love? That's what the problem is. I've saw a lot of times. We speak the truth, but don't have that love ingredient into it. <laughs> Uh, we, we, do we need to have love? We should. I, I know some churches, what, they, they have maybe too much love, but they don't have the truth. I, I've been guilty. Maybe some I need to also have the truth. <laughs> we need to have both. And as a child of God, what, I, I can be guilty, what, of, of, of maybe uh, trying to speak the truth, but what, there can be this contention that can try to be. I don't want to be somebody that causes confusion, that causes strife. And if I allow what? The worldly wisdom to get in my way, what's it going to do? It's going to cause strife. You said, preacher, there's strife going on in different areas, and there's good strife going on in families, strife going on in people's lives right now. Well, it could be. Why? Because they've allowed this worldly wisdom to take over. And if we allow God's wisdom, what? It'll help us. And we're going to go ahead and look at that in a moment. On Easter Sunday, 2013, the southbound side of I-77 near the North Carolina-Virginia border was closed for hours following a massive chain of accidents. Police later reported that 17 different collisions involved 95 cars and trucks. The wreck, uh, wrecks left three people dead and more than two dozen injured, many of them seriously. The cause of the accidents was people driving into thick clouds descended over the interstate that Sunday afternoon. A police spokesman said visibility at that time of the incident occurred when uh, down to about one uh, feet or less, the, the amount they were able to see, the visibility. As people continued to drive blindly forward, they could not see the danger that was just ahead until it's too late. Sometimes what? There's a danger if what we allow the world to listen. We aren't cautious. I need to have caution. Why? 
Because if I allow this worldly wisdom to take over, if I allow this bitter envying and strife in my heart to take over, what's going to happen? Well, it's going to show that I don't have wisdom in my life. And I need to watch for that. Let me ask you a question. Do you struggle with fighting worldly wisdom? I've struggled with it. I still struggle with it at times. Having a godly wisdom in my life. And we will struggle with that until the Lord calls us home. Just notice number three. There's the spirit of the wise man. The spirit, and th this is the bestowing in verses 17 through 18. This is what it says. So he, he spoke about some bad things, but now he's going to go ahead and speak some good things. In verse 17, he said, but the wisdom that is from above. So he's not talking about that which descendeth uh, not from above, but that which is from above. <laughs> he says it is first pure. What, what, what's the word pure? That just means clean or perfect. So God, wisdom that God gives, what? It's going to be pure. It's going to be a clean wisdom. And he said, then peaceable. What, what, what's peaceable? That means uh, free from war. There, there's some people that... They just want to fight everybody they can. They want to fight every believer they can. They want to fight, fight, fight all day long. And it said also, what, gentle. <laughs> uh, 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 that, that just means mild. Some people as Christians, they're not gentle Christians. Uh, I, I, you, you say, well, preacher, I'm a man. I can't be gentle. But you realize sometimes we do need to be gentle. We ought to be gentle sometimes towards one another. We ought, we ought to have gentleness in our life. And it said gentle, and it said easy to be entreated. So that word easy to be entreated, uh, that mean, just means uh, good for persuasion. There's some people you cannot persuade them. There's some people they just have their minds made up and they ain't going to listen. <laughs> uh, some people that you will never persuade them. And, but what? God's wisdom, if you have it, what? You're somebody that can be persuaded. And this is not in a bad way, talking to get you off the truth. And it said full of mercy. So having full of mercy and good fruits. It said without partiality. What do we know about partiality? We remember talking about that. How that they're not favoring one over the other. Sometimes people what? Uh, even in church they can favor one another. And said without hypocrisy. <laughs> so uh, the wisdom that's from above. What? It's not going to have hypocrisy. Be a hypocrite. And it said and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So uh, Christians. What, what, do, what do I need? Well. I need to understand that true wisdom, the wisdom that's from above, what? It's going to have these traits. And these traits, what? They're from God. It's not a man. And what's the result? And the fruit of righteousness is certain of them that make peace. So I, I can be guilty. It should, now, I understand that you're not always going to have everybody in unison. You're not always going to have everybody in the same page. It'd be good if you could, but you're not always going to have it. There's some people that even in church, they're not peacemakers. Now, I'm not saying you're just going to go ahead and just, uh, you know, go ahead and just think everything's all right. People are doing. I'm not saying you need to go and beat everybody up and stuff like that. Sometimes what people might be doing, not be doing right. And sometimes people what, maybe handle it in the wrong way. We need to be a church what that brings peace. Now, has God given us, if you're saved born again, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding he has. As a Christian... I've grown to the place where I want to try and make peace more people. Now, I understand. You're not always going to make peace there, everybody. Uh, as a Christian, there's some people what they want to have that contention. Some people, they'll never get along. Now, this is something that, that, that I've been thinking about. Uh, it, will, will God grow to New Hope Baptist Church? I don't know. Has God done a great thing in, in, in the first two years? <laughs> He has Th things that, that I've never seen before. And uh, it just uh, uh, me and Matt stepped off and, and we started New Hope. All our hopes and dreams and lives changed. People. Well, I don't know. I, 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 I've, I've come to a place, there's one thing I want to try and do. And I know that I'm not always going to do it, but I want God to help me, and I want God to help people in here. Try to love people. Just do it, please. I, I understand you're not always going to like what people are doing. Try to love them, please. Uh, that's the one thing we can catch. I, I, I don't care if we ever have the, the best music. That's what we need to make sure we keep the main thing, to love people. 
Because there's people in our community that we don't love them, we don't care for them. Who's going to do it? Who's going to do it in our community? I don't know about you. I don't want to go to a church where people ain't going to love me. I don't, I, I, I don't, want, to, I don't want to invite my friends and family members to the church if it, they ain't going to love people. I'm not saying that not telling the truth. Because <laughs> sometimes you tell the truth and it's not always going to make people happy. I understand that. I'm not trying to push one over the other. <laughs> but I've understood this. That, that, that you know, we could, we could have to our people. But I understand that, that, that the more people you have, what, there could be more disunity. I have to come to the place, and I, I, I'm in this place. I'd rather have 50 people that are in unison that want to do something for the kingdom of God than 150, 200 that are fighting and bickering. That's what we need. And you say, it's, it's all right to say, man, okay? It's okay to, to, to do it. It's, it's all right. We're going to look at you strange. It's just going to wake people up. They're ready to go eat right now. And, but as a child of God... I need to make sure what that I have this wisdom that he speaks about, this wisdom from above that's pure, that is peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits. And you know what? <laughs> I want to have those things in my life. And a wise person, what? God will give you those. If you seek God and say, God, give me your wisdom, you know what he's going to do? He's going to give you all them things. If you seek friends, he's going to give you the wisdom and it, those things, they come from him. And uh, what, there's a difference between the two. And uh, so what kind of wisdom? That we need to have wisdom and the wisdom, how it can have an effect on our life and what it can really do. Uh, I need wisdom all the time. I, I think about whenever I got saved. Uh, after I got saved, I, 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 God called me to preach. And I said, God, I need wisdom where you want me to go to Bible college. And God showed me. After I got saved, I, I, and I called to preach. I, I prayed uh, and went to Bible college. I said, God, where, where do you want me to go? And God put me where he wanted me. I've needed wisdom along the way. <laughs> now, I could have went a lot of different ways. I could have done a lot of different things. And that goes in, in our Christian life, too. There's a lot of other things we could go and do. We could be. There's other places we could be this morning, but you made a decision to be here. And what I need to ask God for wisdom all along this journey, that even for us, even as a church, as we uh, try and see where God wants us, if it's to, uh, to uh, get a building, my prayer is God will give us a building and we could be debt free. That's my prayer. It's all right to ask him for big things. It's okay. It's all right for his kingdom. But uh, we, we need God's wisdom along the way, and you need it. And we need to say, God, give me wisdom. How to handle situations. God, give me wisdom uh, on how to treat people. God, give me wisdom how to handle my family members. Because we all have areas what, where we need his wisdom. And we know that what God is able to give it. So there was an ancient legend of a king who loved chess. I'm not a big chess fan. I like checkers. <laughs> he challenged visitors to a game and uh, was usually victorious. One day... A traveling sage visited the kingdom and was challenged to a game. To entice, him, and to entice him to play, the king offered to give the sage whatever award he asked if he won. When the king was defeated to honor his word, he asked the sage what prize he would like. The sage asked for one grain of rice to be placed on the first square of the chessboard and then that it be doubled on each following square. The request seemed modest, and the king ordered a bag of rice to be brought. One grain was placed on the first square, two on the second, four on the third, eight on the fourth, and so on. But it quickly became apparent the terms of the request were impossible to meet. By the 21st square, more than one million grains of rice would be required. By the 31st square, the total would go over one billion. With more than one uh, more than half of the chessboard still left to go. Small things have a big impact when they're added together. It is important that we seek God for wisdom for every decision we make. We, we, we need God's wisdom along this way. And I, I believe that the Christians get themselves into trouble. You know why? We don't seek for God's wisdom. And I encourage you to do that this morning. And uh, that I want to be a, a wise man. Or if you're in here, you want to be a wise woman. How do it? Number one, the showing of the wise man. 
my behavior. <laughs> what kind of behavior do I have? The struggle of the wise man. There's a battle. This old nature wants to flare up. It wants to cause strife and envying. Number three, the spirit of the wise man. The bestowing. How God can bestow on us his wisdom. And I don't know about you, when I, when I read the, 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 the traits that he gives, the things that he gives you to, gives to you his wisdom, I don't know about you, that's the kind of wisdom I want to have in my life. And I pray that's so. Every head bowed, every eye closed, uh, nobody looking around. Uh, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this time. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, uh, we're praying this morning that you would help us, Lord, along this journey. Lord, we know that uh, we uh, are apt to make mistakes. We are apt to sometimes not always uh, follow you like we should. I pray, Lord, this morning that we would be Christians, uh, Lord, that would seek, seek for your wisdom. Lord, uh, I know that I've been guilty of not having your wisdom, and we haven't. Lord, I pray to help us. Every head, every eye closed. I'm going to ask two questions. The first one is this. Maybe say, Preacher, I'm here, and I am not 100% sure I go to heaven when I die. Is there anybody like that? Just be honest. Say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure I go to heaven when I die. Anybody like that? Because this one here, everybody knows. Second question I want to ask. Say, Preacher, I'm here. I'm saved. I'm born again. And, uh, Preacher, would you pray for me? <laughs> That, that I have godly wisdom in my life. Everybody like that? I say hands up. I say hands up. I say hands up all over. I say young, old, all over. I see those hands. God sees the hearts. Now I invite you right now, if you need to have a word of prayer, you, you need somebody to pray with you. If you're a fella, I'll pray with you. If you're a lady, I know that, that, that my wife will pray with you. There's other people. But if you need to come uh, forward, uh, you maybe need to make a place on one of these front chairs, maybe make it all right where you're at. I encourage you to do that right now in this moment. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, that you are interested in us. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, that you can give us the wisdom we need, Lord, along this journey. Lord, uh, all of us in here, Lord, may we know some things about the Bible, and may we know things over the years. Lord, help us to take what we know and to put it in action. And uh, Lord, help us to show something different to this world. And uh, Lord, I believe in this room, uh, you have great things you want to do with every person. Young, old, man, woman. Lord, you have things you want to do in, in, in life of couples in here. God, help us. Lord, help us to be wise Christians. And, uh, Lord, we need you. Lord, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this time we've had here this morning. Lord, I just pray just bless us, Lord, as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.